Hello, 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 everyone. I'm going to continue painting on this painting that I was painting in the last stream. Hope all is well. I might halfway through switch gears and start painting um, or start working on a, some 3D stuff. But I don't know. And now. How you doing, Mike? I'm chilling. Doing good. I saw the head studies you're doing. Good stuff, man. Yeah. I'm trying to learn. Hello. What's up? What's learn. up? Uh, does that win? Yeah. Dude, I haven't heard uh, when, your voice when in is a long time, dude. I don't know. Uh, got a new job. <laughs> Did you get a new job? How long ago uh, was that? Uh, I started last... October as like a customer service agent for U-Haul and then just like a couple months ago they got me into IT department so I've been uh, doing the uh, interim manager thing boss is on vacation oh, okay oh you're doing that right now yeah well not right now I'm off work now <laughs> <laughs> nobody needs to I don't need to answer no phones yeah cool man I'm still doing the art thing. It just looks really grim, so like I'm not really holding my breath for it. <laughs> no, nah, man. I already talked to you about this, dude. You're, I don't know. you're on the you're on the dark side of the web, bro. You need to get off of that. You need to like stop watching only bad news. No, no, no. Like, uh, it, it, it's true, right? Though, but like parts of it, like you know, uh, companies, you know, once they kind of reach a point, they can't support anymore you know support staffs i'm i'm pretty sure like the development positions aren't affected but like everyone else is just getting like the shaft you know it's kind of scary yeah it's 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 not as bad as it seems it's only that um it's like an inevitable cost of having a large studio it happens all the time Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, even smaller studios tend to make this mistake, but it's like, um, like I went to GDC, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was that? Uh, it was awesome. I, ran I into couldn't like go. A lot of my good friends and it was awesome. Couldn't go this year. I had planned for it, but then like my dad crashed the Mercedes. So I had to replace that car. Sucky. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the way that I, I think uh, people need to recognize the, the industry is it's, it's it's not that it's um, in shambles because it's it's still making as much money as it has and it's oh, yeah. it's continuously so it's just that it's just being distributed differently um, and yeah. then, and these larger studios um, they just don't uh, th there's just no way around it right like so the larger you become the more people that you hire and the more people that you hire the more money you have to make. And then, and then like what ends up happening is that if the company or the series of companies tend not to make as much money or they project that it's just not working out because sometimes they'll have teams for hundreds of, um, hundreds of hours of work over the span of like several months, like thousands of hours of work and, and they can see that there's no, uh, return nope. in, in the investment. No, yeah. No return on the investment for investing in some of these people. Like I, I get that. Um, but like, I also feel like, it, why do you hire that many support personnel? Right, like most likely the people that got let go are part of the support personnel, right? Well, there's a and... there's a there's a several things to it because there could be because I know when I used to work at Sony, for instance, mm -hmm. they would just hire like, well, Sony is not hundreds of people, right? At least when I was working there, it wasn't, but they would hire, hire like dozens of people, and it would be like okay. the support staff. But it would yeah. only be for like three or four month contracts, and yeah. and when those contracts are up, they just let those people go. Right. So on paper, it looks bad, right? Like on the outside, but on the inside, it was kind of an already arranged agreement. You know, right. they yeah, some people it, are it's stay, all some agreed upon. Are. Yeah, yeah, it's all agreed upon. Like that, I can understand. But like when you let go of like hundreds of people at once, it's kind of like 
a bad optics. You know, it's like <laughs> it, you, it you is bad optics. You're not wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's like it just shows like how bad you are at managing your own resources. You know, like you 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 have this big company, big ass fucking company that's make that's bragging about oh we had a record year in revenue, and then like hundreds of people got let go. It's like come on, dude. You telling me you couldn't manage to let these people go like. You know, some at a time. You have to let them all go at a time. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's, that's just that's the point. Not... We we don't know what the numbers are. We only see the optics on the outside. And the, right, like uh, I, I can understand like uh, if company wants to just focus on development and contract out their support to somebody else, right? Like I can totally understand that because sure. IT does that all the time. Like uh, we'll have we'll run into like busy seasons where we're like, okay, we need like X amount of like service and then how many people would you guys bring on board um when i was in goldman and sex um uh, during the like the crazy trading seasons we bring like at least 20 to 30 people and then how many month. people would stay after the after the thing? um i've personally let go over 150 people but that's like over the course of like five to six months what? It's not like all at once. <laughs> Wait like, a over the course, yeah. But you, like, you just said you bring in twenty people, and then you you would fire literally four or five times more that many people in yeah. a matter of months. Because I'm not the only person that's hiring. That's the thing. Like, there's different oh, departments hiring. But you yeah, see, here's the here's the problem that like it's just the numbers, right? Like, so if you have a studio that let's say has a team of two or three hundred people, and you fire 50, 60 people in the span of like a month or two. Um, that's a good percentage of the company, but it doesn't feel like a lot of people, right? Yeah. But then if you have like 6,000, 8,000 employees and you fire a few hundred, the percentage is actually in their favor. Do you see the pro the point I'm making here? Like when I had a, I see what you're saying. When I, I had a, when I downsized Robot Pencil, it was like just me and two other people, right? So three people. Yeah. So I got rid of, of two thirds of my working staff essentially, right? But it was only two other people. You know, right. and so like now, if if you saw like Blizzard with the, their staff of six thousand or EA with their staff, I think they have even larger staff. Like let go of like what if, to equivalent of what I let go, right? It would but be like, like what? it would be like six thousand people or four thousand people, right? And that well, that would be really like, wait a minute, what's going on here? You know, but what I'm not understanding is that like the support personnel's. Like, they actually need them. Like, Overwatch, World of Warcraft, they still need these, like, service reps. How do right? you know? Because they keep hiring them back as contractors so they don't have to give them, like, benefits. That's what these companies do. So you're saying that they'll hire them for a few months and then they'll hire the same, or they'll, they'll fire them after a few yeah. months and then they'll hire them again? Yeah, through a co third-party contractor. Oh, I see. For so less then, money. So, like, if you go to Blizzard, right, you, you work as, like, a support agent or, like, a GM, you I might see. make, like, 10 to, like, $14 an hour at the time because you were hired straight into Blizzard, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, as the year progresses, these people all get let go. And when they come back, they come back as contractors. They pay you $9 an hour. Like, that's all over the, like, the in service industry. Like, um... I was at Apple for a little bit. I made it to like a senior agent. Uh, I was almost to a VIP agent, who, which VIP is like you handle only one client, like a celebrity. But like I see like uh, over the course of six months, you start with like maybe like 200 people, right? Mm -hmm. Not even six months, not even six months, like three months, like during the busy season. You you start with like two three hundred people, and then by the end of that three months, there's like maybe like fifty people left, and all other people that comes back are all people through like third party contract, and you know I don't understand like you need these people, why can't you pay them a livable wage? Yeah, sure. Even though the World of Warcraft is not making as much money as it did like you know six years ago, right? Six years ago, WoW was at its peak popularity. Mm -hmm. But you know you need these people. Why do you shaft them? Fire them? Hire them back as contractors? <laughs> like it's just shitty practice. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to put two and two together. So you're saying that when you hired, like, because you were in these circumstances, 
And when they let those people go, was it that because the company was trying to save money, uh, or was it because they well, actually didn't need them? And then when well, they hired I mean, them again, they would hire just a fraction of the numbers. Because well, it all depends, right? Like, because if I if well, I hired like a, let's say two hundred people on staff for working on like a project, right? And I come to find out like a good amount of them aren't um, uh, as I mean, as helpful as I thought that they were going to be. But again, uh, being I mean, bad at managing resources, and then if I then hired uh, twenty people more, you know, is it is it like that, or is it more like I hi- I fire hundred people, I hire hundred people, I fire hundred people, I well, hire hundred people. I, I could give you the party line. <laughs> <laughs> we need to restructure to maximize profit. <laughs> That's yeah. what it all comes down to, you know. Like uh, we could restructure to you know maximize profit. But like at the end of the day, like I see a lot of the same people come back, do like the party, yeah. you know. So well, here, here's a here's my conundrum that I, I and it, like just to be clear, I'm actually a big fan of um, having a lot more support for the those who are like not doing as well, right? And those who mm-hmm. get like kind of shafted by these big corporate entities, you know? Because I get it, man. Like I'm not a big fan of uh, capitalism. Uh, set free <laughs> you know what i mean uh, it's very clear to me that um when you just needs regulations to be, balanced yeah, yeah if you it, just let it, it run free it gets, it gets out of control Rent. man it gets, it's yeah. really bad bad stuff uh because what by definition yeah like i think uh on on the principle of the core uh, like the beginning of of it like starting the the business and what what, what you have going there i think a lot of that has uh, a lot of value when it comes to like like how the capitalist or capitalistic systems is set it actually does help people like the little guy uh, be able to like rise up it's just that when that little guy then rises up so exponentially or people who are born into wealth you know now just have like a clear advantage um right like <laughs> they don't, they don't, do they don't really literally did nothing to earn the money other than they just have like a last shit. name Huh? Look at um, they don't do shit. Look at Aunt Becky's two daughters. She got her daughter into a college. Her daughter was like, you "Oh yeah, <laughs> Aunt Becky." Shit about school. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a great example. Absolutely. And so, um, but at the same time, there there are some things. There are c- certain industries that I I've started to recognize that it also makes uh, perfect sense that it's incredibly hard to regulate as well as. Um, to to kind of justify the regulation right and uh unfortunately i feel like the game industry is one of those things man and and not saying that lightly either man like i i've seen many of my friends get laid off i've gotten laid off myself uh, but it's not like something like construction where legacy actually has value um where um experience truly has value like having the seniority right um, where you work is is dangerous potentially, so you need to be protected because some companies will kind of cut corners on you know safety regulations, you know, right. and and so stuff like this, like unions especially, work really well in these circumstances, extremely well, you know. Yeah, in this circumstance, but in like video game, it doesn't work. Cause yeah, the because the problem that, is just contract out to like Asia. Yeah, and and the problem, yeah, it's the scale of it too is a problem, right? Like it's too easy to just look outside, but also like the 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 merits of it is becomes problematic because you'll see that like even in our in the film industry, it's already kind of happening where you'll have only like the only four or five artists work on all the films, right? Yeah, yeah, um, like and it's because Jay. they're protected; they're they're on the list; they're on the very first people to be uh, picked out, you know. And whenever a new artist wants to join into the union, it's actually incredibly hard. Uh, there's a lot, there's a large fee to get in. Um, in some cases, some people say that the best way to do it is actually just to get grandfathered in, right? Where you would have a director or whoever would just like say, "Hey, you know, I want to work with you," right? And um, you're like, "Okay, great." But that. if it's like a, if it's like through a, you know, the one of the larger studios, they they have to like. Um, they have to get you into the union, right? And so right. they'll grandfather you. They'll help you pay the fees. They'll help initiate you to get in. You I know? think it was like 15 grand or something to, for the Yeah, membership. I remember, I know for the art directors, one that I was trying to get into a long time ago, or art, I think it was just like art, I forget the exact name, but it was basically a concept artist, right? Yeah. It, it was like, I think it was like seven grand or eight grand at the time that I was trying to look into it. Um, and, think- and that's pretty pretty intense, man. 
Yeah, um, by the time I found out about Mache, I looked it up. It was like 15 grand. I was like, Jesus. Maybe, maybe I, I'm wrong. Maybe it was even hard, larger than I remember. <laughs> but I just remember it was like a lot. And I was like, dang, dude. And and then when you think about it in terms of like the problem that happens there, because someone like, <coughs> oh, geez, bless you. Bless you. Like, like if you get like any one of you guys, like you and or Mike and any of the people who are watching this, if you guys get really, really good, um, Right, you you try really hard and you put a lot of good effort in, right? And your work is, let's say, better than uh, X artist. Let's say me, for instance. Like I am a good artist, but you, for whatever reason, are much much better, and you're much more qualified. You're faster. You're more Still affordable. Still waiting for that day to happen. Still waiting for that day to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, you you may very well be able to work on the types of jobs that I would work on without any prior experience, right? It's not like um, you can come in totally vanilla, right? Like you would still have to kind of understand how somewhat of a workflow works, how to work with uh, uh, directors potentially, or like how, how to do like just kind of like the ins and outs of development. But but that doesn't take long to re- learn. You know, I, I would say that like not even more than a year, like less than a year to be honest, you know, uh-huh. to really understand like the pipes, like the inner workings, right? <laughs> That that is not that challenging. It's it's probably something that people who really put some time into could probably figure it out in, in a matter of months, right? Mm. Um, and so uh, I don't know. I haven't been in the industry. Well, I mean, I, I I talk about it all the time, like what it takes, right? You gotta like you gotta just do concepts that modelers have to use. The modelers have to then pass that to animation. So you just gotta think about all those things, like the animation team, how they're gonna deal with your concepts. Uh, but all of that stuff's usually ironed out anyway in meetings. You know, you're in a meeting to tell you that's not, we're not going to animate that. Um, or, or maybe they will, you know, maybe they decide, you know what, like, that's really cool. We're going to animate it. You know, mm-hmm. if the concept artist is super stickler about like concepts, like, oh yeah, I'm not going to make concepts that are unanim, like, like unrealistic or whatever, uh, you know, then, you know, no one would be, nobody would be doing concept art, right? Concept art isn't always about being super practical, right? In fact, some of the most popular and most, uh, value. Yeah, they're not practical. Yeah, they're very <laughs> impractical. You, you were just talking about how you love Devil May Cry. That's a great example of just like they. I don't think they really cared. <laughs> you know, they're focused more on oh, just no. gameplay oh, no. and yeah. the fun. And a lot of times, that's all that matters too, right? I mean, even some right. really more classy type of like genre stuff, like Pixar, they too don't necessarily stick to practicality a lot of times, right? And that that's, definitely has a lot more class. It's a lot more focused on like a more broader audience, right? And even that's they, the point of video game, isn't that just to do something that you can't do normally? So, so take a look at the video game industry uh, against like the film industry, right? That's why you see a lot more people putting money into video games. Uh, this is why you see a lot more innovation coming from video games, even from the storytelling yeah. aspect of it. You know, a lot yeah. of times, um, I think that there's some less um barrier these days now to get into film i think more and more directors and uh creators are going like super vent like uh they're going around they're circumventing the the whole union stuff right as a as a point to try to hire talent that isn't like old school legacy and i'm not trying to say that those people who are in those unions don't deserve to be protected in some ways like they get like health insurance that's great and all these other like benefits like retirement funds I think those are actually that is pretty valuable, but yeah. the the parts that are really kind of a lot more sketchy is like the the lack of letting newer artists come in because of fear of because if you let more people in, you know, you're going to run into the gambit of um, you might not actually be working as much as you used to, right? Because there's clearly better people out there, right? There just is, man. Like um, I, I go check our station often, and I'm just like, yeah, this guy's so good, or this gal is really dope. You know what I mean? And so when I think about like the video game industry and like all of these, um, like even like these layoffs and all that stuff, like I feel like this is one of those situations where there is a capitalist uh, solution is that most most of these people need to start becoming devs, right? Because unlike, um, like we go back to construction, right? Like, or any like coal miners or any of these types of jobs, these more like, um, or truck drivers, right? Like, when they lose their job, they don't necessarily have such a great safety net, you know? No, they don't. 
Like you are wise enough to understand there's a concept art field in there. You've already put some time into it. You've worked in these inner circles somewhat. You have some knowledge. So getting started in this industry is going to be a little, way less challenging for you, right? So even if like you end up like, you know, losing another job or getting late, you still can try to get another job in these industries because like you said, there's always a need for it, uh, at least for now, right? But you also have an opportunity to expand your career, right? And I find that a lot of these these people, like oh, some some of them are my friends too. I always tell them like, well, what, you know, you, you should also try to like just make smaller games. Don't try to make million dollar games. Just make smaller projects, you know. And mm-hmm. you might be you might be shocked that you can probably make a you know a living wage making your own content, right? And especially as artists, there's so many ways that we can do it without working at a studio, you know. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's easy either. Right. And it just means that there's just more options. There's more, uh, alternatives. There's not just working for studios or doing freelance. Now I think it helps, right. Especially to build some street cred, but like you took it, take a look at like, um, the guy is like drawing with Jazza. I think that's his, his thing. He's on YouTube. Now, I don't know what professional projects that he's worked on, but he clearly has built a name and brand around just what he does, right? Same as you can say is to be true about Ross, right? Ross does the same thing. And I know he's worked on some some big projects, but it's kind of irrelevant. And I started like following um, YouTubers who are artists and I just try to see like the variety, the breadth of different like content out there's out there and there's clearly an audience for all sorts, you know? Right. And, but that's like, that's just one alternative, like making your own content via YouTube. You know, we talk about this uh, offline, right? We talk about how, um, uh, like how, uh, like a lot of the, the, like I, I, I've been coming or I've becoming less and less <laughs> reliant on just like YouTube news. Um, because Although, ironically, they will fight against this idea of, like, the mainstream media uh, and their agendas, which I fully agree with, right? I do agree that there's a lot of biases coming from these large news outlets, right? But the ultimate reason why is because there's money involved, right? Yeah. And so then I start thinking, well, what, wait a minute, what is the truly the difference? Because if I follow a YouTuber, right, and their whole spiel is to spit out, like, hard left-leaning policies and uh, political points of view, and or another person who s- spits out uh, like hardcore conservative perspectives, right? And that's how they keep building their fans. That's how they keep building their audience. That's how they keep making their revenue, you know? Um, it is only going to be a matter of time before they become the very thing that they hate, you know? Or at least the thing that they... Um, um, or fighting against what it was originally like to me it, it makes the most sense if there was truly no money involved that's the only way that you can relatively re- rely on it but even then it's like well how's that going to happen either because who who's going to genuinely have to do that because uh, most of these people like i said do it because they built a career around it and they keep doing it because of that right they might have started off like just innocent enough just like you know what i think this is what i think right and people are like yeah I agree with that thing. And then they start getting more people that are like, yeah. And if you build enough an audience, there might be a moment where you might not think that way anymore, right? You might actually change your opinion, right? And this is speaking for both sides, right? But if you're does, if if you lean so hard on one side, like it's really hard to come down and change your your brand, if that makes sense. Uh so every I, YouTuber kind of like go through that change though. Like if you look at Phil DeFranco's earlier stuff, he's like trying to all edgy and then as the year goes on you know he starts to open his mind a little bit more he yeah i think philip is things a bit more different you know yeah i think philip is probably the only one that i rely upon uh for now because ultimately right. he he too admits like he can't just rely on like youtube money right, right? Yeah. he has but, to go to like patreon or something yeah he does like well he doesn't even use patreon right which is actually pretty smart he, cre- he created his own kind of brand like it's subscribe to his uh, thing, but he also has sponsors, but he's, he, he might be the one that does it and lasts because he does, um, uh, he's created his own products as well. Right. Uh, he has a lot of merch. He, he's pretty smart, man. He's like trying to develop around like his own stuff is must makes him the money. And then that way, 
um, uh, and he has built a brand around like I do change my mind, you know, and yeah. this is part of like like what you get, you know. So yeah. I think you're right. Like he might like like last the tides, you know, because he seems genuine. Um, yeah, and you can see him argue for each case, right? Yeah, he he's uh, like uh, saying something hard left and then backtracks to something hard right. He's just kind of like you know trying to create a good balance about it topics that he's talking about yeah and and, and that's very it's, rare it's man refreshing. yeah it's a refreshing to to watch philip defranco he's not trying to be an extremist he just kind of wants to stay out the facts and let people make their own judgment on it yeah i know like one time mike you were sharing a, a guy named destiny right um, oh my god yeah <laughs> dude destiny is too it. hardcore man he, he, the, more, the more I've watched him, the more I see those things. Yeah, I mean, he's he's smart, right? Like, he makes some good points from time, but, like, at the same time, he's fully tilted, man. He's so tilted all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like, you're not going to convince anyone of your argument if you're, like, super tilted. Well, not only is tilted, it, it's like, it seems to be common that when he's tilted, he starts to get his facts wrong. Oh, yeah? He's just yeah, that makes trying it worse. to argue. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not relying on that guy. Uh, he's definitely yeah. super dram- dramatic. Um, and Early on, I was like, "Oh, cool, a new, a fresh new opinion." I'm sure it started out him. that way, right? But then, yeah. as time, like, it's the problem. Like, uh, this is the so to kind of make this more artistically, talk about art for a second. Um, uh-huh. You know, like it's like the same thing. Like uh, you see with like creatives, right? Like you'll see somebody like you know the, they're known for a very specific kind of genre of music, of film, of video games, of art, whatever, right? And, you know, you do it for so many years, you, you kind of want to try other things, right? Like, you know what, I want to try, like, doing more of this other stuff. And, like, you don't, your same followers just don't care, you know? Uh, there will be a good subset of followers who are just like, I'm all about what this person does, you know? But the good majority really genuinely don't care. And why should they? They didn't follow you for, um, you know, that type of stuff. Like, if you did, like, Steven Spielberg, for instance, right? Like, he he's known for making like blockbuster films and stuff like this, uh, and really kind of changing the formula quite a bit. And then when he's just like, well, you know, I just kind of want to like try some other stuff, or you know, actually, there's actually a better example: George Lucas. When George Lucas did that uh, airplane movie, I forget the name of the movie. Uh, you know? Red Tail or something. Yeah, he was just trying to like get back to kind of his indie days of making films. You know, just kind of like. You know, I just want to make movies, man. You know, people hated him, and for people that. like just like get back to Star Wars. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, and you, he was just kind of like, you know what, man, I'm just gonna retire, man. I'm just gonna get out of the game. Um, but it's like, uh, it's like the very thing that he created is now his 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 uh, is like golden shackles, right? Not his anymore either. <laughs> yeah, well, he he got rid of it. Like, who knows what he's doing now? He's just probably just swimming in his Scrooge McDuck vault. <laughs> you know yeah he donated a museum that was like a billion dollars i was like god damn yeah he, he could do whatever he wants sure but like but he he was an artist you know what i mean like he had yeah. visions of like what he thought would be great and he would want to make those types of things and uh you know i find that's true with you know even like my peers like they'll say you know like oh, i want to try doing more of this and when you first start trying stuff out you're not that good at it you know you're always going to be like a little bit not as good as like what you were before, like Michael Jordan trying to be um, a baseball player, right? It wasn't that he was bad. It just wasn't as good as some of the, the best baseball players, you know? And, or more, more importantly, comparatively speaking, like he was a rock star basketball player going to a average baseball player, right? It's just yeah. like, like uh, people don't want that. People want like nothing but just ballers all the time, kicking butt all the time, no failing ever, always succeeding, always kicking butt. Right? Yes. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah. Uh, I'm OBS that. reconnected. Okay. Uh, does that worry me? What? What happened? Like, what uh, like that type of mentality where people only see the success but not the hard work, and every time like someone's trying to do something, I want to pull them down. Is that like ever? cross your mind like why that's so prevalent um it's just it's the whole uh, outsider looking in problem right it's like the the thing that i was kind of being critical with you earlier on in our in our stream right where we're talking about like the layoffs like you, you just don't know for sure like it's just it's easier just to assume 
that these these large corporations are just money bags that just don't care about the little people. And honestly, I think there's a lot of truth to that, especially the more money there's involved, right? Yeah. But yeah. it might always it might not always be nefarious either, right? It might just no. be like like it, it, it's never nefarious when you lay off someone because it's not about you; it's about the structure of the company and yeah. how it's going to survive. Like I, like I said earlier, the solution to this problem is, I think, is a free market solution. Because when you have like a, a group of guys make a game like a PUBG, right? And it takes freaking the internet like by storm, right? And then you just keep having like more and more uh, smaller studios starting to create like projects that are being recognized uh, as like high level, high concept stuff. Like, I mean, I went to DTC, right? And I was amazed of the new technology that was available because it's only going to make it easier for smaller devs to create like their own projects by what themselves. Did you, see? Like, you know, wise. I'm sorry, what? Uh, what did you see technology wise? So, for instance, there was this really cool like uh, you can take like a camera and just like take a picture of your face. And then it'll just use the machine learning algorithm to just determine how your face will be sculpted in three dimensions. And it just does it. It only takes like 10 seconds. And it was freaking, like, if you go to Kalen Chalk's, uh, here, let me let me see if I can get Kalen's picture. Um, if you go to Kalen's uh, portrait, like, that's that's an example of it on his Facebook. Wait, what? Let's yeah, if you go to his profile, Kalen Chalk, here, I want to see if I can grab it just so you guys can see it. I'm sure Kalen's okay with me showing his his face. <laughs> oh, so that's that's three yeah, D. Like you can look around. Like you can look to the side. You can look underneath and all that stuff. Here, let me show it to this the, the stream. Like it, it looks like just a picture of him, but no, it's actually three dimensions. Like you can spin it around, turn it, rotate it. Um, the only thing that it doesn't know is his back of his head. But even that was pretty impressive. That it just kind of guessed. But like no, it, it looked. Like we were like, uh, we were just like, what in the world? It looked just like him, you know. Yeah, uh, they even did a one with me, and I had like my hat on, right? I didn't even think uh, about it. I just had my hat on. They just, they didn't even care. Yeah, we just do it and took a picture of me, and it did it even with my hat on. And I was like, what the? <laughs> it was, it was insane. Uh, and so, like, so imagine like tech like that, right? Like you have um, other kinds of tech that just makes animation easier. You have more and more people creating assets that you can just upload to stores and people can buy those assets right like right. a lot of that stuff is being like you know um it's it being looks, spread out it's being you know distributed in indirect ways stream, you know stream i'm sorry yeah, what it feels streamlined like oh you need a tree go here you need yeah it's starting to become go. more and more easier to create or even connect with people who could help you develop the kinds of things that you want right, right. And so, so I think that we're actually at the turning point now. There was definitely like the indie wave of like uh, developing games and stuff, and then there was like the indie apocalypse that happened right after that. Uh, but just like there was with the video game bubble that burst, you know, and then Nintendo came in and was like, "Nah, we'll show you guys how to do stuff." Right? Um, I feel like like another one of those things is coming or coming <laughs> is coming. Uh, but with like indie development, right? And obviously, with that, when that happens, you know, there's going to be more opportunities for jobs, right? And because like a small studio that only has a team like five or six, you know, they strike it big, yeah, they might be able to hire like 15, 20 more people. And you'll just have more teams like that. You'll just have more companies like this, right? And unlike the film industry, uh, I think the film industry is trying to catch up now. They're recognizing that that has stagnated the industry like having a lot of the things kind of protected too much um like even scrapyard filmmakers are starting to make some good movies and shorts on like youtube and putting them out there you know what i mean right. and um it's just becoming more and more obvious to me uh and there, you have more more people getting into the game like you now you have google's like now nah, we're in this now too and we're gonna create like a streaming um let's not talk about <laughs> Let's not talk about Google. the amount of shit they scrapped over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so any, anywho, like they, there's all of this beginning of like creating more and more. Um, like there's just more opportunities uh, for people. Uh, so it's like if you focus in on like the 
like a, the old dying, like the old ways falling apart. And you're focusing on that as the collapse of like the industry. Uh, that's not how it works. It's usually like something's replacing it. And if you, that's what you need to look, keep your eye on. You're like what's the replacement, what's going to come in its place, right? Like, like companies like EA, like large publishers like them, um, they're going to have to try to adapt. Uh, I think they're already trying to do this, you know, um, so that they can, uh, you know, like ride the wave companies that don't adapt tend to like fall on the wayside. Right. Yeah, I, I think, think EA is trying, wanna... like EA, Blizzard, a lot of these, like Activision, all, a lot of these larger studios are are trying to try to be proactive before the the, uh, the change happens. Because like, I, I think it, EA just trying is not one of those companies. They're too set in their ways. To well, I don't know, man. Like the Apex Legends is a great example of that. Not exactly what you're saying. Like, and then there was another game where it was like about these two brothers. I think it was two brothers. It was like these two um, guys who were in yeah. prison to get yeah, out. And it was also an indie game. Yeah. In fact, yeah, they have yeah. like a large indie game division. Like you, you got to recognize well, man, like, like that. It's it, like, not that many IPs from those divisions though. It right. Like it's just like one, maybe two every couple of year. It's not really like encouraging development. It's, I don't know. I don't feel like EA's company. That's going to, rounds all right let's find out let's see what else they're working on yeah unravel that was a, i remember that being a thing featured games so obviously the biggest ones that they have right <laughs> they have sims i didn't know that <laughs> are you serious <laughs> yeah i didn't know that sea of solitude uh all the sports games i knew of all about that unravel view all games Oh, yeah, look at this. What is this one about? A game called Help Burnout Paradise Remastered? Oh, that is that coming out? Or is that already out? I love Burnout. Um, but there's a, there's a look like there's like some smaller game called Help. There's a game called War Friends that looks like a mobile game. Micro Machines. There's pages of 21 pages, man. They don't just have two IPs, man. They have tons and tons of games. And... And they're just pivoting. I think what's happening, they're realizing that a lot of their money that's being made, Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare. <laughs> I remember that. A lot, a lot of those are just microtransactions. Yeah. Well, that's the trend. That's the trend uh, transition, right? Oh, yeah. They did the, the Space series. I forgot about that. Yeah. Dad died years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But at least they try to make three, you know? And uh, the game did well enough so they can make two. It's, it's not as simple as like, well, you know, we tried and then we're just going to let you go. Like, you got to keep making money. You can't just like, like, you know, make one or two successful projects and then just be like, you know, we, we love you guys. We're not going to let you guys go, even though you guys aren't making as much money anymore. You know, like that's that's a hard business choice, isn't it? Especially when you see how many games that they're uh, had hand in publishing <laughs> and how many, um, what you call it, how many... Uh, more they're trying to and i'm not trying to necessarily defend ea by the way i'm just pointing out that it's it's never as simple as you might think right and and even now like i'm thinking like what's going to happen is that they're just going to completely pivot to probably be way more uh, in the position of pushing out um smaller games yeah because it, it just is more lucrative I mean, if you if you look at even Nintendo, Nintendo's even recognizing that this is something they have to do, right? Uh, no, Nintendo is actually telling their mobile games publishers to lessen the need for microtransaction. They just want players to have a good experience. No, you, see again, you're only looking at it on the surface level stuff. Yeah, maybe EA is being really like heavy-handed with their microtransactions, which, by the way, does work and makes the money, <laughs> even as oh, much yeah. as we don't like it. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about like the what fact the, that the Mario's thing. even on a mobile phone. That's unprecedented. You know what I mean? And they are actually working with like third party developers to make first party games. That's like really crazy, man. That's absurd, you know? Um, because they recognize that they too cannot keep up against this this tiger of a, a new industry that's coming around. But you know who will be able to do this and who will uh, be able to not have to focus on hardcore microtransaction stuff. We, we can't rely on the big ones, the big studios. They're too big. 
to kind of like back down and be like keep keep to their morals, right? As much as I love to hear that that's what's going on, it's 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 generally gonna like be really catastrophic for many of the studios, right? It's because um, the the way that it's going to be competed against is by these smaller devs. Like if, imagine just like you, me, and four other guys, right? We just got together and decided to make a game, and it looked really good and it played really good, right? And it got that big hit of like popularity. And we just decided for whatever reason not to scale the company. We kept it still pretty tight. Maybe we, we would hire contractors. We would hire things that are outside of our means. But we wouldn't just scale for the sake of scale. So we would have like maybe like 15 new entire, like a 15, a staff of 15 in total or something like this, you know? And again, outsource a lot of like the more busy work and stuff. Or use third party apps to help manage these types of things, like when it comes to finances and all this good stuff, right? And we just do it that way. We just we just spend money. We don't actually hire departments necessarily. We just keep it really tight. And then we're way we're way more likely to be able to basically um, uh, move around quicker and and not actually make choices like what EA would do or Blizzard or any of these larger studios because our staff isn't that big. You know, uh, a great example of this is Supercell, right? Supercell is a great example of like a major studio that's grown in size, but in a very mo- modest way. Like if you look at how many people work on one of their biggest making, like the b- biggest money maker, it's laughable, like laughably small. It's like less than like fifty people, you know. Where like like Blizzard's biggest money maker has over three hundred people, you know, and it's like the difference is is staggering, and the amount of money that Blizzard makes comparatively to like this mobile game is not no is nowhere near as is the same amount you know and so like you ha- supercell has both they have the money coming in and they got a super small staff right and so they they have a lot more capital to take chances you know what i mean and uh i think that's what i'm saying like overall like i think a lot of these bigger studios uh, this is what they need to do right like they need to like downsize this is just what they have to do otherwise the um, uh, they're just going to be completely shut down so instead of hundreds of people getting fired it potentially be thousands you know and and so I, I i don't know man because it's like behind closed door stuff too i don't really don't know what's going on uh i just know that in that situation it makes perfect sense to me why they have to start trimming their studios right uh because these other ones and I'm not saying this in like a way that like I support it. I'm just saying it's like inevitable because all these other outsider uh, companies are doing it, and they're coming in, taking in like um, the what you call it. They're taking over like these these industries, man. They're making that money, dude. You know, and they're super tight. They're very small. And I, I feel that's going to happen more and more. It's not going to happen less. You're going to just have more kids coming out of college that just have, ble- or like high school even, that just have free software like Blender, like a free 3D modeling software, Unreal, Unity, free game making tools that are like high end that make like AAA studios actually use these engines. It's not just like a gimmicky, like, you know, like a toy that can make a video game. Like these are like full on game engine. And then you have like the ungodly amount of resources online uh, whether it's free or even paid at a very marginal price, you know, like we didn't have that. At least I didn't have any of that, man. <laughs> Coming out of high school, dude. Are you serious? Right? Like, if you really wanted to make a game, you actually had to like, like, really, like, look for those resources to learn any of that stuff, right? Like, if you can't like go to high school today without like tripping on somebody being a game developer at your high school, probably, you know. And so it's like. That's only going to uh, exponentially grow, right? And that's, I think, what these big studios are afraid of. They're afraid of, like, not the other big studios, but they're afraid of the like, the little guys that are coming in and they're going to just, like, wreck house, right? Uh, that's why I think Tencent does really well. Tencent's like, no, we'll just throw money to everybody. Like, who wants money? You want money? Here's some money, you know? And they, they just play the, the waiting game, right? They just wait for one of those Fortnites to hit or they wait for the League of Legends to hit, you know? And they're like, all right, we got all our money back, and let's do it again, round two. Let's do it again, round three. Let's do it again, round four. You know, 
And there are some publishers, by the way, that are really, uh, really good and really, uh, they, they're, they're small too and they keep their stuff pretty tight and they're really helpful to small developers. Like I think uh, Devolver is a good example of this. Like Who they're really, really good studio. Uh, um, Devolver Digital. Yeah, they're really good. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're, they're much, uh, they're very tiny. They're the kind of studio that I think you'd like because they make the kinds of games that nobody would ever heard of or played. They're really niche and really tight, and uh, I love them, you know? But, like, if, if you're like, okay, look, I don't, we don't need to make a lot of money. I just want to keep making games. Like, a company like Devolver is a great company because, yes, they'll give you good marketing. Yes, they'll give you good uh, publishing and distribution. They'll get you in those deals. All the kind of business stuff that you would expect from, like, a big publisher. But they do it for, like, indies, right? But if you want to, like, make that Fortnite money... <laughs> then there is a very clear way to do so, you know? And and it's just a matter of whether you want to do that or not. Because, um, like, even with the Fortnite clones and, like, all the, like, or the or the PUBG clones, rather, right? Or, like, all the Battle Royale games. Like, all of them are getting a piece of that pie, regardless. Like, you know how many, like, Match 3 games there are, you know? Like, there's so many different kinds of Match 3 games and all of them are making money, you know? It's not like... There's only Candy Crush, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's it's just like when you see these companies seeing all the mobile money is coming in, like Blizzard is like, dude, we made so much money from Hearthstone, <laughs> you know? And it took, it was like a small dev team of like a few people and those same few people left uh, Hearthstone, right? And they got like a $36 million deal from like Marvel, dude. You know what I mean? Like how are you going to compete against that, dude? You know what I mean? That's super crazy. That's like, uh, that's intense. And so it's like, uh, this is why these things are happening. It's not just like, oh, this is fire for the sake of making money. Uh, it's also like they're trying to like prepare probably, right? At least if I had to guess. And if they don't prepare properly, yeah, that like these companies won't last. They will definitely will, will be gone. It'll, it only will take like when, um, when esports starts to be the thing that people make or watch more than regular sports, then maybe EA will start to be like, okay, we need to make an esports, uh, esports 11. <laughs> you know what I mean? That'd be really funny. Know. You could play some of the, you play people playing video games. I don't know. Uh, how, how do we know they haven't tried? <laughs> Behind the closed doors, there's one person watching the stream that works there right now. He's like, yeah. oh shit, how did he? You know, you know, they're on to us. <laughs> Grab oh, no. yeah. They're doing like a 3D scan of all the League of Legends players right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure EA has done like a bunch of prototyping on everything. Well, I mean, they have YouTuber simulators now. Do they yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. The EA does? No, no, no. Just in general. No, no, no. Like, oh, like, okay. Hearing about yeah. these like YouTuber simulator games. Oh, but you know what? There's The Sims. So that's, that's yeah, close, man. That makes it is. sense. Yeah, oh, shit. Oh. I wouldn't play it, but somebody might like that. Oh, dude. <laughs> they keep making them. Let's so. do it. Let's make it today, guys. That's the next one, dude. That's the next Fortnite. That's the next uh, Minecraft. Just gamer freaking, simulator? Like, you you are... It's VR. Okay, here. Let me pitch it to you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no to that. Just, I'm just going to save you the trouble and say no. <laughs> All right. You know, two years uh, later, you know, he, Anthony Jones, the creator man. of <laughs> you streamer, I was just, no right now. I was just, just sold no. it to EA for four point five billion dollars, and I'm like, they, they'll probably buy anything. <laughs> that's like a and then Wendy just right sitting now. there, he was just like, "Oh man," driving his dad's Mercedes. He's like, "Oh," and then I just, bought the damn thing. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, you're just driving it around, thinking oh, that day that he was joking around, I should have said yes. No, I will never regret that. That's never gonna happen. You're never gonna get, get me to say that. All right, now All I'm gonna right, I'm gonna go out of my way. Now I'm to gonna make, join up in spite of you. Yeah, I'm gonna go okay. out of my way to make four point <laughs> five billion dollars from EA on a YouTube uh, simulator. <laughs> All right, you guys do that. Yeah, but anyway, um, <laughs> regardless of whether or not you like those types of things, some people do, right? And there's definitely like, there was a game called, um, shoot, what's the name of the game? It's called, like, Game Dev. Um, dang, 
what is the name of it? It's like a mobile game, and it's like you just play like a game developer, and you just make games. It's, it's like a simulation type. Like it's kind of like The Sims, you know, where you just build and build and build, you know. Uh, and I loved it, man. It was good. It was a lot of fun. I think PewDiePie actually has something too, like it simulates streaming. Um, let me go to the comments to see what people are talking about. Let me go all the way back to the top. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm going to pause the painting for a second. Um, I'm sure people commented on what we were talking about, too. Hey, mate, I was up till 2 a.m. Oh, what? Watching all your streams. So good, mate. First seen you on Proco and been a fan ever since. Thank you, Scat. Uh, hello. I think this is when they're talking about, I mean, all the talk about Blizzard being unfair. Uh, I think that was when we were talking about, like, uh, yeah, the layoffs. The layoffs, yeah. It's like a zero-hour content in the UK. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Oh, zero-hour contract in the UK? I don't know what that means. Because you have to profit on a certain level. It's not that they run out of money. Yeah. Capitalism yep. left unchecked. Yeah, I mean, like, to kind of get back to that statement that I made earlier, like, if you really think about it, uh, Amazon's a great example of this. Right, they're just shutting down companies and brick and mortars like all left and right, dude. Um, it's and it's a lot of it's indirect as well. It's not always direct, right? Some of it's definitely direct, right? Like what they did with Toys R Us. They're like, "Yo, we're gonna partner up." And they're all right, great, let's do it. Let's make toys together, and you guys help us ship them. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. And then Amazon figured out how to do it, and they're like, all right, I don't think we need you guys anymore. We can just do it ourselves. And Toys R Us is like, "What? We had a deal." It's like, yeah. I think we could do it better without you guys. I think you guys are slowing us down. We're uh, Amazon. Go uh, fuck yourself. Yeah, and then they're like, what? We're going to sue you. And it's like, okay, how much you guys want? How many zeros? All right, you guys got it. It's all yours. <laughs> and then Toys R Us gets the check, and they're just like, wait, we we won, but how come it feels like we lost? <laughs> you know? And then just like years later, just bankruptcy, shutting down, closing store by store, right? And it's it's uh it's crazy. And the way that I like to think about like or try to explain this part of like capitalism unchecked, it's like when you ever play poker and somebody has all the chips and everybody else is trying to like play the game and you can't buy back in, right? So like one person has like a hundred dollars worth of chips and everybody else only has like ten dollars worth of chips and the minimum blind is like five dollars, you know what I mean? It's like it's really hard to go against the chip leader in that circumstance, you know, because they can they they can call you all in for forever. They can go they could bet on every hand, you know, where you would have to choose very wisely on the hand that you have to bet. And when you let uh, corporations and companies get that much wealth, that's what ends up happening, right? It becomes really it becomes really problematic. It's like really hard to 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 keep them in check. Yeah, keep that in check. It's like incredibly hard. You know, a lot of the reasons why our government has gotten so out of hand uh, and many other governments is because of corporate interest, because of that money, like calling all in on everything. Like literally, like they could break the law and they're still kind of like, man, whatever, we'll just pay to get out of it. <laughs> it's like, what? No. Uh, like, what was that guy that just, um, I just watched the Philip DeFranco right now. He was talking about the the summit guy, right? The guy that. Oh, what did summit do? Like, well, he, the guy that faked his whole uh, getting beaten, right? And like he was like, oh, MAGA country. Oh, Josh Smollett. Josh Smollett. Yeah, he um, he apparently got yeah, off like there's no dropped. charges were dropped or something like that. I'm just like, yeah. this is another really? good example of like that money, it's man. Garbage. Yeah. Anyways, so you just, it's it's pretty intense, dude. I guess a believability. Oh, wait, hold on. Hi, Anthony. I'm a fan from Italy. You think it's possible to learn and improve studying at home? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because I have money for school. Not a problem, dude. Just, if you have YouTube, which you do, you can learn a lot, man. Uh, I try a, a lot, but I give up because I don't know what method to use. Okay, so the problem is that you give up. You should you should not give up. Uh, ultimately, you will figure out something. You'll, you'll come to some conclusion. But every time you're expecting to do it right the first time, that's the problem. You're, you're not supposed to. Uh, I, I don't know a lot of the stuff that I learned, you know. I, I just learned it, and there's there was times where I couldn't find a re- really good resource, but I just kept on trying. I tried different methods. I just kept on guessing until something worked. Uh, I think for the first two years of me painting, I, I did it badly. I didn't do a good job um, of studying appropriately, but that taught me a lot about how to study appropriately and also taught me what not to do. So it wasn't lost. 
Like it wasn't lost time. It was like time that was still helpful to me. I guess believability and practicality can get mixed up easily. The former could be considered its own fundamental. Yeah, I think that's true. His Star Wars action figure money. Yeah. That's Star Wars, the Lucas stuff. Yeah. And I does not receive notification of the stream with YouTube. Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Anthony, why did you back off 3D and focus 100% on 2D? I'm just curious. Uh, I don't think I've ever went full 3D. Um, in fact, I only kind of focus on 2D because I, I like 2D. It felt a lot more creative, uh, at least at the time. Uh, now with hindsight, it's not necessarily true. It's just, I just, I think something about just like being able to like start something like immediately and then make something really cool. Uh, and something that has a lot of impressionistic, like, like has a lot of, a uh, impression to it. It's really cool. All right. What else? Let me see if I can just kind of hope you things are shifting the way you say. It makes me hopeful that I might be able to pursue my own projects. I mean, literally there's so many free gaming thingies out there that you can literally just make your own games, you know? Uh, what's the theme of the chat? Uh, sorry, Black Pixel. No, I got it. No, we were just hanging out. I'm just trying to stream, just hanging out. There's no real... Unreal Engine's free for, like, any individuals. Yeah. They don't collect license fees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Jordan says, why go live? Laugh out loud. And then, okay, are you planning on graphic novel? If so... Yeah, I actually am. Uh, okay, take care. The guy left. All right. My bad, Jordan. Am I always supposed to talk about arts? My bad. What about high schoolers think, uh, what a lot of high schoolers think is that becoming a game dev is basically they do it at home, gaming and playing. Uh, as a high schooler, I can say that's what I think being a streamer is like, not a game dev. Okay, but I see your point. You mentioned that you learned programming, just curious why. Do you plan on making your own games? I am making my own game right now. Robo Pencil for Life, oh, thank you. Who are your favorite masters? Sergeant, JC Leindecker. Uh, some uh, living masters would be like Jeremy Geddes, Phil Hale, and almost everybody on ArtStation, like all the, the bests. Uh, I like them all. There's not really that many I don't like. Turbo Free, Unreal Town, USA. Lumberyard is another free engine. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, did you see the content creator Martin Brons Bronswick? No, I have not. But anywho, yeah. Yeah, I'm working on my own thing right now. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe um, one of these streams I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of game jamming. And I'll make a game based off of user requests. Like they'll just suggest the thing and I'll just try to make it. Uh, of course, it's got to be something I can do. <laughs> if it's like, I want you to make a MMORPG where everybody is furries. And they're going against... Um, the non furries, which I guess would be everyone else, <laughs> and it's about world conquest, open world, um, battle royale. But it's a battle royale that takes place in uh, in a span of twenty days. Oh, that's actually not a bad idea. Hmm. Maybe well, I shouldn't be out broadcasting these ideas. Furry, furry outlaws. That's the name of the game. One stream, game done. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Um, I could probably make a 2D game. That would be much easier. And I can definitely do it one stream. And then after I'm done making it, I can put it onto uh, itch.io for people to play right after. Uh, that could be a lot of fun. <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV, basically. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. My my uh, design that I did on, um, what you call it? Love, Death, and Robots. Yeah, I'm still waiting to see if we're allowed to show it. We're not allowed to show it just yet, so... Soon though. Wait, what? Which Even though the show is already out. Well? Uh, yeah, you can't. You can't usually do it without some sense of like permission. And and usually, I if I do post without asking, it's usually like a year or so later, or just like a long time after. You know what I mean? Like if the soonest might be like a few months. Um, but if I feel like really like excited, like I feel excited about this, for instance, I I ask if I can. Um. And if they don't say anything or they don't say, uh, if they say no, not yet, then I, I just wait like I would normally would wait. But if they're like, yeah, go for it. Put it on blast. Tag us. You know, then I'm like, all right, cool. You know? Um, and especially for what I did because it's spoilers. You know what I mean? Because um, I kind of don't want to spoil it either. Um, 
And that's why I didn't do it like right away instinctually. But I heard like somebody was posting some of their stuff that they did. And then uh, yeah, people, stuff. yeah. And then people like uh, they, they reached out to them, like take it down. So, oh, really? so yeah, yeah. So I, like I, yeah, I my instincts were right to kind of just take, take a, shit. take a second. Take that shit down right now. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to think about it too. It's like you you are a service, right? You can't just share whatever. Um, Yeah. And it's only like when um, when uh, when I'm when I ask, like when I did the Starcraft stuff, I think I waited like like, it took about like several months before I posted it. Yeah, I I posted it like a long time ago. Well, well after the game came out, you know. Yeah. And now I'm posting stuff that's been even older. Like super old, like some of the newer stuff I've been posting was like five years old, and so I like the, yeah. But I I, uh, I generally just don't want it, just because I don't want to mess up relations as well. I, I have a question I, about like uh, the stuff that you worked on that can be shown in public. Like when you do like a uh, interview or something, is there like oh yeah, sure, we for like closed door viewing. Something? Yeah, we do like kind of like a friendly a type of system usually when that happens. Uh, I only um, do that if I know for sure I'm working with somebody that I trust, right? Mm. Um, but even then, like, I usually put in doing it through circumstances that uh, allows only them to look at it, you know? But, yeah, uh, I would I would advise not to just, just go out and start sharing work until you know for sure you can. Uh, and like I said, waiting several years is definitely safe. Uh, waiting like uh, several months is, is relatively safe as well. Um, but like waiting seven seconds, yeah, I don't know. That would be, that would be super, super uh, pessimistic about that one. All right. I'm going to end the stream here, homies. Thank you guys for hanging out. I appreciate it. Yeah, maybe next time, like I said, maybe I'll like make a little game jam. I think the next stream I'm going to do a the study session. Um, probably I might, I might do it tonight. We'll see. I got like my little, uh, iPod, uh, stand thingy. We'll see. Um, but if anything, it'll just probably just be a video. Um, right. and with that, laters friends, cheers. Cheers.